Hello everyone, that's in day second video. So we've already had a look at whether it's week 10 days and a lot more information crammed in that as well because we have a look at the Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation, what's happening with the stratosphere and other factors as well. So it runs about 20 minutes. It's here on the homepage. Just scroll down the page a little bit and you will find it above the snow desk. Um, quite an interesting uh, video button, but it, it's primarily focusing on the weather for the next week, 10 days, going to be end of October. Now, this is a more extended update. So, this one is going to be going for uh, through the next three months. We're going to start in November uh, uh, next month, and we're going to go through to January uh, with a long-range JMA model. This is all in anticipation on a week on Sunday uh, that will do the second seasonal model roundup for winter of 2017-18. We'll get something like 10 or 11 long-range models together and see what uh, they're all showing uh, for the second time this season. And the JMA model, which we're going to use for this update, it does go into that uh, seasonal model roundup. We do uh, use a JMA as part of that uh, seasonal model roundup. But because we've got 11 or so long-range models to look at, we never have time to go in-depth uh, into the JMA. You get a lot of information from the uh, JMA long-range seasonal uh, model. So we always like to take this one out, sort of isolate it out, and uh, see what it's showing in its own own terms. Um, because we can't do that in the season. Well, around it, because there's too many other models to get through, if you see what I mean. So, um, for this one, we're going to uh, go from next month, from November through to January, with the long-range JMA model, see what it's showing. We'll start off with the Northern Hemisphere and Pole view down, and then we'll have a look at the mid latitude. Uh, view and have a look at temperature and precip uh, precipitation anomalies. But we're starting uh, with November's 500 millibar height anomaly from the North Pole down into the Northern Hemisphere. So we've got the North Pole uh, up here and then we've got the mid latitudes of the Northern Hemisphere uh, around here. 500 millibars is the area in the atmosphere where high pressure, low pressure are being moved around uh, by the jet stream. And on these charts, blue will be extrapolating to below average heights, which is low pressure, essentially. And yellow, orange, or brighter colours extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. Remember, this is the anomaly for uh, November. So what we see with this one is that we've got an area of below average heights out to the north and west of the country. Above average heights generally centering to the south and to the east of the UK and out there in the uh, western part of the Atlantic Ocean. So what that means is that the flow and the jet stream does something uh, a little bit like that. And it looks a fairly unsettled signal, especially for the north and west. But the main thing probably is that it is a mild signal because we're bringing the air up from sort of a southwesterly or westerly type direction uh, going something uh, rather like that with this ridge down across uh, central parts of Europe and the below average heights up there. It sort of pulls the air up from the southwest. So you'd expect that to be a mild signal uh, for November to start us off. Probably not overly unsettled in the south, could be reasonable amount of dry weather there. More unsettled though, up in the north. This is how December is looking. This is month two, so the further out we go, of course, the more unreliable it's all becoming. Now, this is rather a strange looking chart. We've got above average heights through uh, the Atlantic there. Uh, also, some above average heights generally centered to our east. When you see these yellow, uh, colours. So the model kind of thinks that's above average heights, but in my experience, generally that is average sort of pressure. Uh, I think maybe doing something a bit like that uh, with the flow and with the jet stream. Otherwise, there's not a lot to work on. You would probably look around and think it's a uh, dry signal for December. I'm not overly convinced about that. I would suspect average sort of pre precipitation. I would have thought still quite mild because overall there's nothing to force the air into the north. So probably uh, a mild December in terms of temperatures and in terms of precipitation, I suspect near normal uh, with that. And then finally, we go through to uh, month three, which is January, January 2018. We've got a very, very long way out now, of course. So this is in the more unreliable uh, phase of the model. You want something cold. This is perhaps the most interesting 
uh, month. So let's deal with the south. We have got above average heights around there. That to me looks like the Azores High is pulling back uh, towards Bermuda. Uh, down here, which is always quite an interesting signal. Then we've got above average heights extending through there. So around Greenland, going up towards Svalbard, we've got an area of above average heights, quite interestingly. It is also placing below average heights uh, to our east across uh, sort of Denmark and into northeastern parts of Europe, southern Scandinavia. Now, it is a complicating factor. Sort of these brighter colours uh, down here, uh, which looks like they're above average heights running through the Mediterranean. That's never normally a very good signal, but they are mostly yellow colours, which again, in my experience with these charts, they're not overly uh, high with the pressure when you get those yellow colours. It tends to be when you go to sort of deep yellow and orange, such as we have up here more. Uh, around green to go to towards Svalbard. That's a definite ridge that Molly's picking up on above there. So with ridging up there, you will think that this trough, we might be starting to pull in cold air from the north or northeast into that trough. Certainly for Central Europe, I think that's a reasonably cold signal. For us, it is less clear-cut because of all of this yellow that we've got in the Atlantic. But I think the uh, centre of the Azores High is pulling back towards Bermuda, which is usually quite an interesting sign. Also notice uh, across many northern parts of America, we've got quite a deep trough there. So that's cold air digging down into much of the north of America. To me, it looks like it's trying to turn both sides of the Atlantic, this side here and also this side down here. It looks like it's trying to turn both sides of the Atlantic, America and Europe uh, towards the cold side in uh, January. Now, do bear in mind, this is three months away. The model almost certainly won't be showing cold and average uh, temperature anomalies at this stage, and it is in the most unreliable part of all of this. So, uh, don't, whatever you do, get too excited about that. Let's have a look at the temperature and precipitation anomaly, anomalies for the next three months. So, um, this is the tropical mid latitude view. We've got the tropics just here. That is the equator to the south of the equator uh we've got the southern hemisphere uh let's get rid of that and start again so this is the equator uh going on just there we've got the southern hemisphere uh just there to the south of the equator of course northern hemisphere is just here to the north of the equator the poles are off the chart so the north pole is uh over there or up there uh, we just had a look at the North Pole view down, of course, so we don't need to see that again. Anyway, South Pole is uh, down there. Uh, and what else do I need to tell you? So, this part of the Northern Hemisphere, we've got America uh, over there. We've got the Atlantic Ocean uh, just there. Europe is over here. Russia is over there. Asia and China down there. Um, and, of course, the Pacific Ocean is up there as well. Most importantly out of all of that is that the British Isles in the top right-hand corner of the chart as you're looking at it. So, a reminder of the uh, 500 meter height anomaly for November. We've come back to month one. I've got above average heights to our south and also going into uh, Central Europe as well. Below average heights up in the northwest. And we do something a bit like that with flow. And with jet stream as well. So what does all this mean for uh, temperatures? Well, the temperature anomaly for November, and it's to be expected really, is coming out on the milder than average side. Not just for the UK, but for many parts of Europe as well. How is the precipitation looking? So it is looking actually quite wet, especially so for the north and the west, closer to average in the south. Uh, but overall, quite a wettish and mild month being signalled there uh, for November. Let's just have a look at the mean wind direction. Always a job to work these out, these black arrows. But the mean wind direction is sort of coming up from a southerly, southwesterly direction, which explains why it's seeing a mild but also quite a wet month, particularly for the north and the west, with the mean wind direction tend to be from a southerly or southwesterly direction. This is how uh, December is looking. Month two. This is rather a strange looking chart. We've got the ridge, or it was a strange looking chart. We've got the ridge in the Atlantic. It looks like some sort of ridge is extending through some parts of the UK as well. But I'm always dubious when these yellow curves uh, appear. This orange area, that is the centre of the ridge. But all of this around here 
it looks like that should be ridging as well, but I'm always dubious when those yellow curves appear on these charts. In my experience, the heights and the pressure tends to be lower with those yellow colours than you would anticipate. Uh, so, and uh, this is backing that idea up because the model is actually going for quite a wet December with above average uh, precipitation. So, quite a wet end to the year. November and December are both coming out quite wet. Temperature anomalies, they're still holding up generally a little bit above average as well. So a mild uh, end to the year also. And then what are the uh, wind arrows doing? I mean, wind direction. Uh, so to the east of us, we're dragging up sort of southerly winds. But to the west of us, we're pulling down northwesterly winds. So we really are in a bit of a no man's land actually there with uh the weather coming at us probably from all directions just looks quite an unsettled month and i suspect actually that might be a lot more cyclonic than you would think just by looking at the height anomaly i suspect that is a fairly wet uh month with low pressure or depression a trough generally centered within the 500 millibar flow over the uk and uh some northwestern parts of europe and then we go through to uh, month three, which is January, the most unreliable of all of this. So that looks like the Azores High is pulling out towards uh, Bermuda Bear. Remember, these yellow curves look like they're an extension of the ridge. Actually, pressure tends to be a lot lower where you get those yellow colours than you would think by looking at them. Uh, I've also got that trough, which is over here, uh, across sort of Denmark, northern Germany, that sort of area. And then we can't really see the pole, uh, but we have had a look at it. We know we've got quite a bit of ridging going on up there, which I thought might be entrenching some colder air uh, into this trough just here. The uh, rainfall anomaly, precipitation anomaly for January 2018, the first month of next year, is coming out above average. So all three months are looking uh, above average with the precipitation. And do we get any colder than average temperatures? No, we don't. The model is still going for generally slightly above average temperatures. Although you notice virtually the whole of uh, Eurasia is coming out with slightly above average temperatures. That looks a little bit strange, I have to say. Uh, over in America, northern parts of the states, particularly to the northwest, coming out quite cold up there. What is the mean uh, wind direction doing? So again, it is difficult to make these out, but the black arrows look as though they're coming in from a northwesterly, possibly even a northerly uh, type direction, although across Europe they go more sort of west northwesterly. I think January does hold out the best prospect out of all these three months of getting at the very least some cold snaps coming through, if not uh, uh, extended run of really cold weather. There's no evidence that we get extended run really cold weather in January, but certainly I think there's enough there to say that there could be and more than that, it could be some cold snaps in uh, January. Otherwise, December and November both looking quite mild and quite wet as well. Remember, this is all very, very speculative. These long-range models are in their infancy, really, with the science of them. So they are prone to chopping and changing. Uh, could look very, very different next month. It's just a snapshot, really, of what the Japanese Meteorological Agency Season model is showing today. It could look very different when we get through to uh, next month. And talking for JMA, tomorrow it's JMA Friday, so we'll have the monthly look ahead as always with Japanese CFS V2 models. Remember, this JMA update uh, will be forming part of the seasonal model roundup, the second seasonal model roundup that we'll do week on Sunday, the final Sunday of October, when we get 11 long range models together, see what we're all showing for the winter. Right, don't forget to check out today's first video. It's here on the homepage, just above Snowdesk. That's all now. Thanks for watching.